A frequently asked question about standards-based grading is what do daily grades look like? We've talked about our assessments, which count as major grades, but what about minor grades? I'll be honest, this topic has been a challenge for me and I've tried many different approaches. Part of the challenge is holding to our core values while still meeting school and district policies. Therefore, in this video, I'm gonna present a couple different approaches instead of just the one that I landed on. Therefore, you can look at your context and see what will work for you. So sit tight and let's explore this together. Before we look at two options, let's flash back to Dylan Williams' quote from earlier in the workshop. Never grade students while they are still learning. As soon as students get a grade, the learning stops. If grades stop learning, students should be given them as infrequently as possible. This quote had such a big impact on me that I had to show it twice in this workshop. It really drives my philosophy around grading in general, but especially daily grades. I believe we need to be careful not to overgrade students. In fact, many times daily grades can turn into behavior management plans instead of markers of learning. For example, we may use grades as subtle threats to keep students from going wild in class. We also may use grades as gotcha moments to keep students on their toes. Although these approaches may work for some students, at the same time they may also prevent us from reaching a lot of students who choose not to persevere in these types of environments. For every student that develops healthy discipline, there are many others who drop out before they have a chance to reach their potential. Therefore, I'm strongly in favor of grading as infrequently as possible, and if I do take a daily grade, I want to make sure it represents learning and not a sign of student obedience. So what's my ideal scenario? This is controversial, but I'd actually prefer not to take any daily grades at all. Again, grades stop learning, so I don't want to stop learning until it's an appropriate time. And I believe that appropriate time is assessment day, not daily grades. I think about it like preparing for a competition or completing a personal project. What ultimately matters is the final product or how we perform on competition day. I don't want the competition judge taking off points from our work leading up to the competition. During the preparation phase, I need space to explore, make mistakes, and build myself up before I'm ready to compete. I only want to be judged at the final event after I've had proper time to prepare. I believe the same is true for students. They are in progress of learning every day leading up to the quiz day, and I don't want to interrupt that progress with a premature grade. I prefer to save that grade for assessment day. However, I realize that almost all districts have policies requiring daily grades, so we are kind of stuck in a tough spot. So, with all this in mind, here's the approach I ended up using after trying many different options. First, I gave students the minimum required daily grades per district guidelines, and I'm a strong supporter of this approach no matter what our daily grades look like. Again, I prefer grades to be taken as infrequently as possible. Second, I ended up actually not grading daily assignments, but I instead just averaged pairs of quizzes together and put those averages as individual daily grades. Here's what I mean. After students took their first two quizzes of a grading period, I averaged them together and put that as my first daily grade for the nine week grading period. Then, after students completed the third quiz of the grading period, I averaged all three together and placed that as my second daily grade. This process continued in the same way until we finished all the quizzes for the grading period. In addition, when students improved their quiz grades after retakes, I updated the daily grades to reflect the new averages. This approach usually allowed me to get close to, if not all the way to the minimum number of daily grades needed, and it also ensured that all my grades in the gradebook truly represented student learning. I didn't have to worry about stopping learning because I wasn't taking grades unless it was a quiz. So that's the strategy I landed on, and I'd do it again if I was in the classroom right now. However, I realize that approach may not work in all settings, so here's a second option. I never tried it, but I learned about a strategy called lagging assignments from Henry Pichiato. What is a lagging assignment? Basically, Henry decided to give homework assignments over previously learned content, not current content. So if we are currently working on proportions in class, the homework isn't on proportions because students are still in the process of learning. Instead, the assignments focused on concepts that students have already had time to learn and get better at. Therefore, 
students are probably more confident and ready to approach the assignment. So, if I had to do a different approach, I would start by integrating lagging assignments into my daily grades. I wouldn't make them homework assignments if they were to be graded because that would eliminate quite a few students. However, I would give a lagging assignment during class every once in a while and grade it. Again, I'd still give the minimum required daily grades and schedule them as infrequently as possible. But I like the idea of an assignment over something students have already learned and worked on in order to ensure learning has occurred before grading them and to keep students fresh with previous concepts. Those are my two favorite options for daily grades, and I hope one or both give you ideas for how you'll approach your own daily grades. Now, before we move on, I do want to address two common questions. First, does a lack of daily grades prevent us from tracking progress? No. That's what formative assessment is for. We don't need grades in order to know how students are doing. We can monitor them with free chances and other checks for understanding. Also, quizzes come around often enough to where it's not long before we have graded progress measures as well. Second, do less daily grades lead to decreased student motivation? Do kids not try when things aren't graded? In my experience, the answer is actually the opposite. Students showed more motivation and perseverance when I took less grades. Overall, I want student motivation to be tied to things other than grades. This takes some retraining, but I did not have issues as I lived out my core values for my students. They knew I believed in this approach, and they valued it as well. Also, I found that if I demand engagement in how I conduct myself throughout class each day, that goes much further than grades do. Overall, as you reflect on your daily grading practices, I want you to remember that less is more. Less grades means more motivation and more perseverance for students. And less grading leads to more longevity for teachers. Reducing the amount of assignments we need to grade leads to more work-life balance for teachers. Therefore, I'd strongly encourage you to consider a reduced grading approach.